In this video, we're going to walk you through the installation of a flexion extruder on a replicator style printer. This includes the Rep1, the Rep2X, the Flashforge machines, and all of the other clones that are out there. So getting right into it, the first thing you want to do is remove the entire extruder assembly from the X carriage by removing the two screws from the bottom of the unit. Then bring the extruder assembly down from the machine onto a, a clear level working surface. And you will need some additional tools beyond what's included in the kit. You'll need the Allen wrenches that came with your printer, a crescent wrench, and possibly a screwdriver and some sandpaper. Start by disassembling the old extruder, beginning with the main screws that go through the fan and into the stepper motors. And as you remove them, you can pull the stepper motor and drive assembly off the back. Let me just pause for a second and give you a quick recommendation. Before you get too far along, uh, go through and label all of the wires. So the fan, the heater, the temperature sensor, and the motor. Um, label which one goes to the right assembly, which one goes to the left assembly. You'll be very happy you did this later. Then remove the fans off the front. Loosen the set screws holding the barrels in place. But unfortunately, because of the poor design here, there's no relief on the barrel, so the set screw galls up the OD of the barrel and prevents it from sliding out of the bore. So what you'll likely need to do is use a screwdriver or some other tool to pry the, uh, the hot end out of the mounting block. And the best way we've found to do this is to take an appropriately sized slotted screwdriver and work it on both sides of, of the barrel, um, prying to get an axial force on the barrel and just working it free from the bore. You really only need to get one of the barrels out, since what we're trying to do is just allow the removal of the temperature sensors without twisting up the wire and straining the sensor. So after you've gotten one of the hot ends out, Loosen the set screws that are holding the heaters in place and try to slide the heater out of the bore. But again, in many cases, the heater will uh, have some corrosion on the end of it, so that will prevent it from releasing from the bore. And what you do not want to do now is pull hard on the wires of the heater. If corrosion is the problem, take some sandpaper and clean the corrosion off of the far end of the heater. So after you've removed the heater, you can remove the temperature sensor with a crescent wrench. And rather than turning the wrench, um, grab hold of the, the temperature sensor with the wrench and turn the entire hot end assembly. This way you won't strain the temperature sensor. So after you're done with the first hot end, uh, follow the same procedure to remove the heater and temperature sensor from the second hot end. And this is where I realized that I did not go through and label my wires. So I'm going to have to do some testing to figure out which heater and temperature sensor and fan go with, with which assembly. Next, start working on the drive mechanisms. So disassemble the drive blocks from um, both the left and right extruders. This is all pretty straightforward and probably doesn't require much description. Just uh, one thing to watch for when you are taking out the, the hinge point. Um, try to keep a little bit of compression by hand on the lever so that as you're removing the screw at the pivot point, uh, there's no bending load created by the spring on that screw, which would end up damaging the threads of the motor. And after you've stripped both motors bare, but before you start assembling the flexion drive unit, take a shoulder screw either out of the arm or out of the dial and thread it into the, the motor and make sure that there's enough thread length available in the motor so that the, the foot of the shoulder of the screw seats against the face of the motor. But if the screw bottoms out before the base of the shoulder reaches the faceplate, then you have to remove the two top screws on the back side of the motor and put a washer underneath the head of each. The washers are included in the kit. And for a little bit more detail on how to do this, you can go to the support page of our website. So after you've confirmed that you have enough thread length, you can put the arm and the cam dial on the assembly uh, by threading in both of the shoulder screws. 
Next you can attach the drive gear onto the stepper motor shaft and this part requires a little bit of finagling but it's not too complicated. The first thing you want to do is drop the drive gear onto the stepper motor shaft and then align the groove in the drive gear with the groove in the idler by eye. So torque down the set screw that is contacting the flat of the shaft. Then set the cam dial to 4 Take a piece of hard filament like PLA or ABS and feed the filament into the extruder by hand using a crescent wrench on the flat of the shaft to crank the filament through. And you may need to loosen or tighten the set screw that contacts the cam um, in order to get the filament to feed properly. Then with the filament in the extruder, loosen the set screw that you had torqued down on the flat of the shaft. and kind of wiggle the drive gear back and forth and then torque that set screw back down and next torque the, the set screw that's at 90 degrees to that first one. Um, you want to torque both of them down to prevent the drive gear from loosening due to the, um, the cyclic load that it sees um, as it's feeding filament. Then you can remove the filament and follow the exact same procedure for the second drive assembly. Next we'll work on the hot ends, starting with applying the insulation to the heater block. So take the hot ends out of the mounting block. And we just show quickly in the video there that the um, old extruder, the MK10 style extruder, does fit in the mounting block. So if you did buy just one of the um, right extruders for this assembly, you can use your old um, hot end from an MK10 unit. So remove the barrel and nozzle from the hot end. Then apply the insulation starting by aligning the hole for the barrel. Um, screw the barrel in until it bottoms out, then back it out again a half or a full turn. Then wrap the insulation around the heater block. Put the nozzle in the opposite side, screw that in until it contacts the barrel and then apply the tape to hold the insulation in place. And do the same thing for the second hot end. Then at the end, be sure to apply torque with the wrenches included in the kit between the barrel and the nozzle on both hot ends. This creates a seal and prevents melted plastic from leaking out of the hot end. Next you'll install the temperature sensor and heater in each hot end. And start by checking the fit of the heater in the bore of the heater block. Um, as the unit comes in the box, there's a brass sleeve in each of the hot ends. And this sleeve is to enable 6 millimeter heaters to, to work with this heater block. But in many cases, these printers come with quarter inch heaters. So when you press the heater in, if it pushes the brass sleeve out, it means that you have a quarter inch heater. And again, when you're installing the temperature sensor, grab the sensor with the crescent wrench and rotate the hot end so that you are not twisting up the sensor and, and causing strain on the wires. Make sure that there's not too much slop between the OD of the, the heater and the block because this is a clamping hot end. Um, it needs to be a pretty tight fit. So if it's too loose but still doesn't fit in the sleeve, what you can do is uh, wrap the heater with aluminum foil. Just one or two wraps should give you a nice fit. Mm -hmm. 
Then after you've installed the heaters and temperature sensors, you can mount the hot ends in the main mounting block. But before you do this, you need to check the whole spacing on your printer X carriage. The mounting block is symmetric to account for the two standard hole spacings on uh, the majority of printers out there. So then after you've found which orientation of the mounting block will work on your printer, you can install the, the hot ends and tighten the screws that clamp on the barrels. While you're doing this, make sure that you're putting force on the hot end toward the mounting block. This is very important for the function of the flexion extruder because the PTFE liner for the barrel is cut to a very precise length. And if the, the hot end is not fully engaged, then there'll be too much gap at the drive gear and uh, this will cause jams when, when printing with flexible materials. Then you can install the drive unit, making sure that the PTFE tube slides up through the hole in the bottom of the drive mechanism, allowing the, the PTFE tube to align with the nip point of the drive roller and idler roller. And when you go to tighten down the main screws through the fan into the drive assembly, you will need to put pressure down um, on the drive mechanism toward the hot end. Uh, to align the screw holes. There's, there's a mild compression of the PTFE liner, again, to, to make sure that there are no gaps that would allow a flexible material to, um, to cause a jam. And if you have trouble finding the holes in the motor with the screw, one thing that you can do to make it a little bit easier is set the cam to position four, and this will allow a little bit more space for the PTFE liner and make it a little bit easier for you to get the screws in place. And you can drop the additional PTFE tubes in the top of the drive mechanism to act as guide tubes for the incoming filament. And if you go to our website, you can download a part that screws into the top of the drive mechanism that will hold this uh, PTFE tube in place and allow the attachment of an additional guide tube and you can customize it to, to fit the diameter of the guide tube uh, that comes installed on your printer. Then you can also remove the button head cap screws in the heater blocks if you didn't use them to attach your temperature sensor. And at this point you're ready to install the, uh, the full assembly onto the X carriage of your printer. And there are two extra M3 socket head cap screws in the flexion kit that you may need to use to mount the assembly on your X carriage depending on the design of the carriage and, and how much thread length is required. Then install your flexion inside sticker and you're done with the installation. Then be sure to check out our website for operating instructions and printing tips and tricks.